Part 1. Evidence. Those who do not remember the past are condemned to repeat it. George Santalana. Chapter 1 Enigma and Conspiracy. To see the future, you must look backward. The Book of Isaiah. The beginnings, both of earth and of man, are a complete mystery. The theories concerning our beginnings that we have been presented with, by both academics, who talk of evolution and gradualism, and by theologians who claim creation, are each fraught with a myriad of inconsistencies and contradictions. In reality, the true histories of both man and of our planet are still an enormous riddle. It would seem that all anthropological, archaeological and now even genetic evidence says that modern man simply does not belong here. The question was posed by scholar Zachariah Sitchin in this manner. If life indeed began through a series of spontaneous and random chemical events as evolution and science has so far surmised then why is it that all life on Earth stems from a single source and not from a myriad of different sources that were each arrived at by chance? And most importantly why does life on Earth contain so few of the chemical elements that can be found in abundance on the Earth yet so many others that are in fact, celestial elements? and rare to our planet. Could it be possible that the seed of life did not actually evolve on the earth but in fact came here from somewhere else? We have, in some ways, gained some insight into the very first stages of our solar system and our home planet. How it was first formed from the gases, elements and primordial stuff of the universe, gradually cooling into a solid sphere and how the elements then reacted and combined until somehow at last, the spark of life was born but from then on, it becomes a little hazy. Embracing evolution, scholars have taught us that all life on Earth first came from the sea, gradually finding limbs and crawling its way onto land where it slowly evolved to form new creatures, and eventually birds, animals and all other life. We are taught that in ancient times, well before the dawn of man, strange prehistoric beasts of huge proportions ruled the Earth, enormous cold-blooded reptilian creatures which we have named dinosaur, meaning terrible lizard. It is believed they first appeared around 193 million years ago and reigned supreme until most were wiped out some 65 million years ago in the shattering impact of a meteorite or comet fragment in the vicinity of the Gulf of Mexico. The event caused mass extinctions among many species by covering the entire globe with a cloud of dust and debris plunging the planet into a nuclear winter and a devastating ice age. But Almost miraculously, small pockets of the prehistoric creatures somehow withstood the ravages of cold, survived the ice age and continued to evolve. Then there is a kind of a gray area during which the first man evolved from apes and began life in caves some to two three million years ago. During that time primitive man is said to have evolved from primates through to Australopithecus, Homo habilis, Homo erectus, then the and earth all species which eventually declined to be replaced by cro magnon a species that was very similar to modern man but seemed to appear apparently from nowhere. Then eventually cro magnon was itself replaced when the first species of Homo sapiens was born about 250,000 years ago. Homo sapiens sapiens or modern man is said to have first appeared about 40,000 years ago, at which point it's not considered to be too great anymore and we're told that man's history then becomes a relatively straightforward affair. Over time, man ceased dwelling in caves, learned to become hunters and gatherers, formed villages to live within organized communities and slowly progressed to civilization about 6,000 years ago, eventually learning to sail and travel, and finally culminating in our current civilization and advanced level of technology. We are therefore, in the 21st century, at the very cutting edge and peak of man's technological achievement so far. Never before in the history of our species has man had such wonders at his fingertips as those we have created for ourselves in the brief moment in time that is the 150 odd years since the Industrial Revolution of the 1800s, apparently. All scientific investigation into our past up to this point has been designed to fit within this orderly paradigm. But due to these restrictions, and even with all of the significant advances in technology we may have made in the past 150 years, we have made very little progress in solving the puzzles presented to us by the Earth's past. The reality is that our distant history is still an enormous riddle. We only know what we do from the gradual piecing together of the many enigmatic and confusing traces that have so far been recovered from around the world, 
but our true knowledge of ancient history still remains confusing, unknown, or fragmented at best. All we really have are various creation myths and theories. And it must be clearly understood here that in the case of archaeology and even evolution, theories are really no more than ideas and possibilities. One person putting forth what they see is a rational scenario based on the various information or artifacts they have personally been able to gather and study. A hypothesis or possibility based on available evidence. These theories are then put forth to the academic community for peer review and when the evidence that led to the conclusions has been tested and assessed and criticized and reassessed and recriticized and the idea has been deemed agreeable by all parties, an overall assumption of fact is born. This fact can then be used as a basis, or rule of thumb, for further studies. That is, until someone else comes along and disproves it by discovering and proving the new fact. That is how peer review works. For example, the theory encompassing the entire history of man's ascension that was just described for you on the second page was surmised from scientists studying the total collection of the mere 200 hundred bone fragments, which was the entire amount that had been excavated and recovered from around the world at the time. And the theory has never really been subject to any serious revision or academic challenge. The entire theory is also based on the assumption that Darwin was correct, but what if the basic supposition that was used as the rule of thumb in many of these cases was erroneous to begin with? What if it didn't happen that way at all? What if our history did not actually run as has so far been believed? Surely if it could in any way, shown to be possible that man's history and indeed the entire Earth's history ran in a completely different way to what has been currently theorized and taught as fact then shouldn't that be investigated too? Shouldn't all avenues be exhausted before being dismissed, until the whole and real truth is found? Isn't that true investigative science? Well, yes it is, but the trouble unfortunately, is that modern science contains a certain amount of politics and well, people just simply hate having their theories proved wrong. In fact it's always been that way. As history recalls to us, the great scientist Copernicus wasn't even game to release his theory on planetary rotation until he was on his deathbed and it was his very last day of life. And just look at what happened to Galileo. Even Newton, as admired and respected as he was, never announced his involvement in alchemy and his search for the hidden codes of creation he believed were locked within the words of the Bible until death, for fear of being tried for heresy. In that respect, it appears that things haven't really changed a great deal. If the truth be known, and in stark contrast to the currently accepted view of history we are presented with by academia, there are certain, and quite numerous, telltale signs on our planet and in our solar system at large that suggest a very different course of events than the orthodox tenet, and there are also other more esoteric signs that can be found around the world. Evidence that has been left by our ancestors clearly suggesting that they possessed a very extensive and extraordinarily detailed knowledge of these events and of the behavior and workings of our planet and solar system. There is also evidence that they based entire cultures on these celestial events and believe them to be moments of incredible significance for mankind and for the Earth. And there are also tantalizing hints of a long-forgotten method to decipher these earthly and celestial signs if we could but find a way to read and understand them. I understand of course that most people who disagree with the theories of Charles Darwin are almost automatically labeled as creationists but I assure you that this is by no means the case. In all reality, after even a cursory investigation, biblical creation stories are far too contradictory to make any real sense. Also, in the case of the biblical tale, a really disturbing part is that the story is not actually original to the Bible as has been claimed but is in fact, as has now been adequately proven, the borrowed, greatly edited version of a much earlier, more complete account. By way of comparison, the orthodox accounts and theories of evolution and man's past history that we have been given by academia, and that are now presented to us, virtually as concrete facts, are also patchy and problematic at best, while some can even appear quite fanciful. The real problem with both theories being, that they simply cannot account for a great many details and, in many cases, are both vastly contrary to quite solid evidence.